Hey YouTube, in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at running 96 gigabytes of memory, so that's 2x48 of these G-Skill Trident Z5 kits. These are the 8,000 mega transfers kits. So the, you know, DDR5-8000. So we're gonna be pairing them up with the Ryzen 9 7950X3D, similar to the video I did previously, which was covering 48 gigabytes. So one of these, now we're going to add the second one and run four sticks of DDR5 and see how well that works. Okay, just to kind of go over how it was set up before. So with the first kit, I had them in A2 and B2 because they're on two different channels. It's one DIMM per channel. Now what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to move these two to one of the channels and then install the second kit in, a, in the other channel because I want the two RAM sticks from the second kit to be on one channel and i want to isolate the original kit on another channel so these two need to go together and then these two need to go on the other two so it's going to be a1 a2 i'm going to give those to these two and then b1 b2 are going to be these two so we're going to show how that is and the nice thing about the g-skill ram is you can get different colors so what i did for the second kit is i got silver so i know that the black ones go together. So when I'm installing them, if I'm pulling them out, I don't get them mixed up. So once they're installed, see that's how it should look. So my, my original kit are the black ones. Those are on A1 and A2, and then my new silver ones are on B1 and B2. This way, because they're from potentially different batches in terms of when they were manufactured, even though they are advertised as the exact same kit, like it's both, they're both rated for 8,000 at 1.35 volts, I want to rule out any sort of micro differences in terms of the manufacturing tolerances for them based off of the batch. So that way, channel A has memory from one batch and channel B has memory from another batch. This way, we increase our likelihood of getting this to run stable. The DRAM LED in there is blinking. See, that's the DRAM LED. So it is doing memory training. Okay. So that's a good sign. The GPU is up. Now, one of the things you can do to make things easier is you could clear the CMOS to start, but I'm just trying to see what happens if I just put two sticks of memory in there to make a total of four. And you can see it looks like it finished the training. And it came up at 3,600. So that is expected because that is the max official spec for DDR5 when you're running a 2 DPC configuration. And you know what? Let's just do, let's turn on, you know what, let's try this. Let's try the JDAC profile, 5600, JDAC 1.2, 1.2, okay. We can do gear one now because of that. And then, that's going to load the 44 timings. Okay, so that's pretty loose, but All right, I'll take what I can get. Let's see let's see if this will work. So it's doing memory training via the code 15. So that's good. So yeah, unfortunately 8000 for four sticks for a total of 96 gigabytes might be too much. I might try See the the problem is I don't have I don't have 16 gigabyte dims to test this with. So I can't try, you know, 8,000 across like a 16 gigabyte DIMM. I only have 24 gigabyte DIMMs, so I can't do like 64 gigabytes across four at 8,000 since I don't have RAM that's rated for that. And I don't have, I don't even have RAM that's Hynix that can do that capacity. So it's all Samsung. So, but this is the best RAM that I've got. The new Hynix MDI. And that's a good sign. So that, okay, so this one worked. So the JDAC profile worked. Now I don't know if this is 100% stable. We're going to have to test that. But the, the JDAC profile that was in the SPD, you guys can see this one, that's the one that I loaded. And that one loaded up across all four sticks. So I guess the way G-Skill designed this RAM was if you're doing two sticks, you can do the XMP 8000, 
But if you're doing four sticks, you're probably not going to be able to do that. So they have this JDEC fallback in here for that. So let's, uh, hmm, let's try to do something here. Let's try to make this go to 6,000. So I'm going to try 6,000. And I'm going to increase the voltage to 1.25 to account for this higher frequency. Let's try to offset that and change the bus termination values. So this one is nom RD. Nom RD, we'll make this one 60. That's what it did. That one we did, uh, what do we do here? 60. RTT, WT, or WR, RTT, uh, what is this? RTT right, okay. RTT park, let's make this one 48. DQS RTT park, 48. DRAM drive, DQ drive strength. I want to make this one 34. OT on die termination. This is product OTT. Let's make this one 48. And then DQ drive strength. What is this one? This one is. Okay, just leave that one 34. And then leave this. Is this CA drive strength? Yeah, so okay. So just manually set this one to 30, manually set this one to 34.3. So they're not changing. All right. And then all of this stuff can just stay the way it is because we are upping the voltage and leaving the same thing like that. Okay. Okay, so I've been testing the RAM for a couple of days now with using all four sticks you can see in Task Manager. We are running four out of four DIMMs at 6,000 for a total of 96 gigabytes. So we have, we have four sticks of memory, four, at four times 24, that's 96 gigabytes. So I am able to run 100% stable. I've been using this setup for about almost a week now at this point, and not a single crash. Tested multiple games, tested memtest, 86 mem test 64 a bunch of other memory things early on and then I started doing a lot of real world testing I mean I've done a couple of live streams now with this setup and it never crashed once doing all kinds of random workloads so I could potentially tighten the timings even further and further optimize but this setup I know works at 6000 the takeaway is today with the current motherboard generation the RAM sticks and the CPU's memory controller. This is kind of the upper limit. You can possibly do 6200, maybe 6400 if you're lucky. But this I know works. And do I recommend doing this when it's all said and done? Uh, I would only recommend this for people who really, really want to look at their PC with four sticks of memory populated in the motherboard. Otherwise, I highly recommend two sticks of 48 gigabytes. So two sticks for a total of 96 gigabytes is what I've been running for several months on my other machine and I haven't had any problems with that. In fact, that one's able to run 6400, which is the XMP profile that it's it actually ships with. So this is a it's a nicer looking setup because it's four sticks of memory, but I don't think you get the same ease of use compared to if you were to go with only two sticks for the exact same total capacity of 96 gigabytes. That being said, uh, very similar to my 192 gigabytes video that I did at 6,000 mega transfers, I do think that this is easier to pull off compared to 128 or 192 because the DIMMs that I'm using with this kit are single rank DIMMs. So in general, if you want to just copy paste my settings, I think it would be much easier for the average user to just plug and play what I have here and they'd probably be fine. So just to kind of show my Zen timings here for those that are probably curious, don't really pay attention too much to the sub timings, the tertiary timings, because I didn't bother to change any of those. I basically loaded the 
one of the memory profiles for 5600, up that to 6000, left it at gear 1, set VSOC to 1.2. You don't need a lot of SOC voltage on this, and you can see we're in gear 1 mode, U clock equals VEM clock. Uh, what really made this work, though, was the on-die terminations. This section down here, all these resistances, these impedance values, and these resistor divider values here are what actually made this work. And this is exactly the same way I was able to get 192 gigabytes working uh, on a similar computer earlier this year. This is probably the best you can get if you want to run as much RAM as possible at the highest speed possible while also doing four sticks of memory. It's either going to be this or you might as well just going to run two sticks of 48 and save yourself the trouble because this required a lot of trial and error changing these values here. So anyway guys, that is it. That is how you run four sticks of memory at 6000 with the highest capacity available for single rank DIMMs. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'm really looking forward to Zen 5 and seeing how that new CPU architecture improves the memory compatibility, speeds, density, etc. And potentially the ability to do 2 DPC without having to do a lot of these manual adjustments to impedance values. So if you like the video, please leave a like. It does help me out. It does motivate me to keep making these type of videos. If you really like these videos, feel free to subscribe. I do weekly live streams every Thursdays. So if you have questions about a build that you're doing or if you're running into some problems with your computer, you can feel free to drop in on Thursdays and ask your question, and myself and the viewers will answer it live. So once again, thank you all for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.